Welcome back to our topic area in economics that we're studying and that we are learning uh, the basic principles of economics or basic concept used in economics. Now we are on the general introduction of the economics. So now we are on Unity 3 which card nature and the scope of economics is what we are going to study in this video. Now we got, we're going to see nature of economics. What is the nature of economics? Positive and normative economics. Why positive and normative? Remember that I, we have mentioned it before about the branches, about the, uh, the terms or the concept that used in economics. So that's why we are going to, to see it like a review. That's why we are going to look at them so that we may focus on what we are going to study now in economics about the nature and the scope of economics. So we're going to see that positive and normative economics. What are the difference? Now, economic variables. We're going to see branches of economics as we have mentioned there. After the end of the unit, we're going to see unit summary and unit assessment. It's, it's, up, it's up to you guys to, to see what, can, what you could get uh, in this unit and uh, how you can respond or answer the questions that, uh, that is going to help you to succeed well. So, unit three, nature and scope of economics. Key unit competencies. By the end of the unit, you should be able to describe the nature and the scope of economics as applied in various domains. So you will see them. So, nature of economics. What is the nature of economics? So, activity three now. A, in groups of five. If you are alone, please remember to think as if you are in a group of five people or students. Debate why you would call history in that subject and biology as a science sub subject. To mean that e economics is like a science, so is like a science or other sciences like history subject and uh, art subject and biology science. So a, or another like a geography and so on. Those one is like economics. So economics is like those those courses now. So why debate why you could call history a not subject and the biology as a science subject? B. Using the knowledge derived from the debate in a above, discuss why economics is not in the science subject. So C. Make presentation to the whole class. Make presentation to your paper if you are alone. If you are, you are with another, please discuss after the discussions. Now, in this unit, we are going to concern about what we have mentioned before in those questions. In this unit, we are concerned with the questions. Is economics a art subject or a science subject? We shall look at the methodologies uh, methodologies used by economists to arrive at their conclusions so as to answer these questions. The unit is also concerned with the subsistence of economists. Scholars such as Leonel Robbins, as we have mentioned the definition, Leonel Robbins have described economics and we consider as we consider it uh, as an economic uh, definition. GB says and G.S. Mill, in the definitions of economics, look at economics as a science. Those are examples of the people or the economists who have mentioned economics as a science. G.S. Mill defines economics as a practical science of production and distribution of wealth and problems involved in production and distribution. That's true. And Leon Robbins defines economics as a science that studies human behaviors as ends and means which have alternative uses. G.B. says talks of economics as a science of production so you might you might see this science of production science that studies human human behaviors and practical science of production all those people all those economists have mentioned that economics is a, like a science so from the above we can conclude that economics is a social science subject it falls in the same category as psychology 
political science and sociology. As a social science arts, economics studies human beings and the decisions they make to influence the economic environment of the society they live in. So, uh, it uses scientific inquiry based on observation and deduction to build models that can explain the phenomena. As a science subject now, economics uses scientific approaches which establishing truth about an economic event. Economics defines a concept and quanti quantify them for purposes of evaluating and testing. Now, why? Why economics use different approaches? We will see them when we will start to uh, to study in senior five economist economics. I mean uh, about the chapter called in uh, national income. National income. Uh, in order to measure national income, we have three approaches. We shall see them. Hypotheses are developed from the scientific approach used, which is stand periods of time to become laws. Principles and theories that explain economic behaviors of individual groups and societies. It uses data into the theories developed to test and predict behaviors. So now that's the explanations of nature of economics. That's how we have mentioned it, that those uh, those key points or those tips that uh, describe describe economics. So, what is positive and normative economics? Activity is three or two in groups, in groups of five. If you are alone, remember, sit as if you are in a group of five. Read through the following statements. So, A, I, workers are paid good salaries. So, listen carefully and think about this. Workers are paid good salaries. HIAIDS. It kills many people in sub-Saharan Africa. B. I. Workers should be paid good salaries. To C. A and B. Workers are paid good salaries. B. Workers should pay be, should be paid good salaries. Everybody should learn how to save and invest. What is the difference in the above statements? What are they? What are the difference? Identify the statements that are objective and give what actually happens on the ground. What can you say about the other statements? Read carefully. Now, those are some examples and answers. Positive economics is a branch of economics that studies variables the way they are. That is the way they exist in a real life. Positive economics is factual and can be verified. It uses objective explanations. For instance, a statement like prices for agricultural products fluctuate frequently is a positive statement. Prices for agricultural products fluctuate frequently is a positive statement. While normative economics is a branch of economics that studies variables the way they ought to be as a desirable condition. It uses subject, subjective explanations. For instance, a statement like prices in the market should be stable is a normative statement. Yeah, prices in the market should be stable. That is a normative statement. So these those examples will help us to understand about normative economics and positive economics as we have mentioned it in the unit one remember that unit one why economic variables economic variables so activities three three Twahiru is a commercial Irish potato farmer in Musanze district. His target is to produce high quality potatoes in large quantities. In groups of five, remember, sit as if you are in the groups of five people. Now, A, explain how the following will affect his anticipated yields. I, a favorable season to use of improved seeds and farm tools three the price of Irish potatoes four government legislation B 
on which of the above variables does Twahirwa have control? C. Analyze and find out whether a change in the amount of output produced can have an influence on the flavor on the flow. I mean on the four variables. I'm sorry. A variable is a factor that can change. That's the meaning. A variable is a measurable. Examples of variables include prices of the commodities, government policies, and amount of output produced. Those are the examples of variables. These variables can either be endogenous or dependent or exogenous and dependent. So, endogenous factors originate from the, within the system. Exogenous factors originate from outside the system. Changes in the exogenous factors affect the endogenous factors. Changes in the endogenous factors may not influence the exogenous factors. So, the amount of Irish potatoes produced the above activity in the double of activity is an endogenous variable. It is influenced by the seasonal change, factors that originate within the economy and affect it but, but can be controlled are endogenous. So, exogenous factors are not affected by changes in the endogenous factors. For instance, in the above activity, change in season is exogenous variables. It is not influenced by change in output. Of course, factors that originate from outside the economy and are beyond the economy's control are what we call exogenous. So, thank you very much. We are going to see what are the branches of economics. What are the branches? Remember that on the above normative and positive economics, as they have defined it, they have defined it that positive economics is a branch of economics that it deals with. And so, and normative, it is the branches of economics that it deals with. Why they brought you again branches of economics? So, now in a group of five, now I mean, list the different parts of the body. This is an example. List the different parts of the body. Now, because we are going to see branches of economics, so list the different parts of the body. Brainstorm and explain how each part functions independently think and explain how each part functions independently c discuss how all parts of the body work together to make the body function yeah are you understanding the statement discuss how all parts of the body work together to make the body function d relate the discussions to economics and its branches Microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics and macroeconomics. So now discuss if you have different parts of the body and those parts work together to make a body function. That's how economists is. They have branches, they have different parts. And on those parts Worked together so that the economies, economics can be full, can be well organized. Economies, the branches of economics. Now, as they have asked us to relate the discussions hmm, to economics and its branches, which are microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics is a branch of economics that studies individual units of the economy. Yeah? Are you understanding? Is a branch is a branch of economics that study is a branch of economics that studies individual units units of the economy. Such units may be households, farms, or prices of commodities, among others. It looks at how the single unit functions individually. So it looks 
It looks at areas such as household decisions on consumption, the farm's production, and profit maximization decisions, market prices, and their regulations. That's how the microeconomics works as a branch of economics. Microeconomics is a branch of economics that studies all units of the economy, and all units of the economy. Remember that microeconomics is economics that is a branch of economics that deals with individual units that's what we call differences a branch of economics that studies all units of the economy as an aggregate is what we call macroeconomics so it looks at the economy as a single functioning unit this is because the difference I'm sorry. This is because the different different individual units of the economy are inter interrelated. It looks at areas like the causes of economic growth of change in interest rates and their effect on the economy, effect of monetary and fiscal policies. Those are it examines the economy as a whole unit. So that's why activity three and five. Do you like the view in the picture above? So, what you required is only to look, watch. If I can say what, no. Look. Look at this picture and rethink. Think and rethink. What are you looking at there? What do you like the view in the picture? Do you like the view in the picture above? Yes or no? Why do you like them? Ask yourself. B. Name the natural features identified in it. Name the natural features identified in it. C. How important are the features in today's economic world? Huh? Do you understand these questions? How important are the features in today's economic world? So, first, you are required to look at it. A. Now. If you have looked at it, why do you like the view in the picture above? Ask yourself. B. Name the natural features that find in it. What are you looking at in that picture? What are you looking at that picture? C. How important are the features in today's economic world? D. What can be done to protect such features? What can we do? To protect that future simple questions so thank you very much guys unit summary in this unity the following were discussed now we are going to see what are the summary and what we have covered in the above uh, but above notes or above explanations about nature and the scope of economics so unit summary unit summary so in the in this in this, in this unit, the following were discussed. Economics as a not subject. Economics as a science subject. Positive economics. We have seen what are normative economics. We have seen economic variables as, an, as endogenous and exogenous factors as variables. We have seen the branches of economics as a macroeconomics and macroeconomics. Now, unit assessment three. So, if you have studied this unit and uh, you need to evaluate whether you have caught anything, please read this unit assessment. This will help you to see whether you have understood this unit. Number A. Number one. Differentiate between the following. As as a student who has studied positive economics and normative economics, differentiate them. What is positive economics and what is normative economics? Two, endogenous factors and exogenous factors. Remember, the question is differentiate between the following. If they say differentiate, okay, let me continue. 
think about it microeconomics and macroeconomics microeconomics and macroeconomics those six terms of economics you are going to differentiate between two or both similar similar uh, similarities you are going to differentiate between those two terms positive economics and normative economics endogenous factors and ex exogenous factors microeconomics and my macroeconomics so there is no similarities but they are different one is differ different to another one that's why if they say differentiate to mean that if there is no similarities that we want in those definitions or in those explanations that you are going to, de to give. Differentiate. Before you answer the questions, remember, there are some tips that you have to follow when you are going to answer such questions. Please, don't say positive. If they say positive economics, what are they? Or what is it? And now you say, is a branch? Pe -pe 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 -pe. And you continue. No. Start with positive economics is d -d 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 and so on until you finish your explanations. Remember to give what we call thesis. Thesis is a something that is contracting, that is convincing a reader to read and being attracted by what you are explaining. That's how to answer. Remember to, to say uh, the opinions or the supportive, supporting details in what you are, what you are answering. And they remember to take a conclusion about what you are explaining. And it is not necessary. It is not necessary to copy what you have studied in the book. So you you are going to to sit and think about what you have learned basing on your english explanations it is better because national income i mean i'm sorry a national exam this will help you to think for what you have asked for not basing on what you have uh, you have caught in your mind what you have copied from the book, but what you have learned and what you have what you have said in your what you have stayed in your mind according to how you have studied. That's how to answer. Do not copy in your book in the book. So but explain. It is better to use the brain basing on the explanations that you have got. So, two, read through the following and classify each statement as either microeconomics or macroeconomics. This is the very simple question is that every student should know. In many different national exams, they ask this one. They ask these questions. To, say, to, 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 to see and to read each statement, but you have to differ with one another by saying this is microeconomics or macroeconomics. But many students fail. I don't know. They fail this statement. Read through the following and classify each statement as either microeconomics or macroeconomics. I. Study of the functioning of prices in an economy. 2. Rwanda's economy is growing at a fast rate. 3. Study of employment levels and unemployment levels in the economy. Study of employment levels and unemployment levels in an economy. Study of the operation of farms. V. Taxation. Every member of labor force in the country should be employed. So, to answer these questions, 
you might know microeconomics and macroeconomics. What are the difference between two words? In order to answer that, you have to know the meaning of microeconomics and macroeconomics. So, guys, I encourage you to learn. I encourage you to take some minute so that you can revise. You can revise for what you have learned. This will help you just to study and study about what we have learned. Remember that we are on the topic area, general introduction to economics. And we have studied what are the principles of economics, principal tools of economic analysis. We have studied it. We have, uh, we have to study. So if you have these equations and fractions in economics models, we shall look them. So what I encourage you, please, you have to take these advantages of to learn how we can, uh, you can achieve success for what you have learned about economics in these pandemic seasons. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching. Remember to sus subscribe, like, and give comment if you have any questions about what we have learned. Please come and uh, join us on this YouTube channel called Yukuri. We shall be together in different courses about what we have learned and what you, ca you, you can learn so that you may succeed national exam. Thank you very much. Remember to subscribe and follow the videos that we upload every two days in a week. Thank you very much.